Hello everybody, thank you for tuning in to the Maxim 3D and Motion Design Show. My name is Pedro Ramos and I work as a motion designer at Territory Studio in London. Um, first of all, I want to thank Matthias and Lily and the entire Maxim family for allowing me to present here today. It's an incredible opportunity, so thank you very much. Um, now about Territory, I'm sure many of you are familiar with the kind of works that we do, but if you don't, uh, basically we are a studio with offices in London, San Francisco, New York and Vancouver. And we are involved uh, in, in projects in the film industry, um, also in TV shows, video games, we create title sequences and we even help um, visualize technologies um, in, in real life apps, for example, in, in the medical and uh, automotive sectors. Um, a lot of the work that we do involves visualizing these futuristic technologies and uh, many of these assets we create in Cinema 4D. So what I would like to do today is just break down a few scenes for you so you can take a look at how we approach creating in Cinema 4D. Uh, I'm also going to show you how to comp these assets a little bit. Um, and yeah, basically, I hope you can take some valuable knowledge. Um, but first of all, uh, we are going to do the right thing and play the show reel, um, which I hope you like. And I will catch you on the other side. What do you want, Joe? I want to ask you some questions. So I hoped you liked our reel. Um, so a territory, a huge part of what we do is helping directors and clients develop a story. Uh, we generate assets like interfaces, hologram, and essentially we imagine futuristic technologies that are going to help move the story forward. Um, and for this, of course, we use a wide array of tools, but um, Cinema 4D always remains as one piece of software that we end up incorporating in pretty much every project. Because, uh, you know, it's easy to use, it's versatile and it's very artist-centered. So in a matter of minutes, you can create setups or even smaller elements that you can incorporate into an interface, create more complex CGI scenes, track footage and add those elements in. Um, and, and all this within the same app. So it really is a fundamental part of our workflow and it's fully integrated in our pipeline. Uh, now, before I joined Territory about two years ago, I knew that Cinema 4D was a program that I knew I would be using if I could ever <laughs> land the job there. Um, so I, I spent some time watching Seagraph, NAB and other presentations from Territory staff using the program. And I was blown away by how sometimes very simple setups can become so intricate and, and cool looking uh, just by using MoGraph, Deformers and the standard renderer. And this is um, exactly uh, what I would like to focus on today. So uh, without further ado, let's take a look at what we'll be creating today. So we are going to be taking a look at how to create um, this central object, this golden orb um, that we see here animated. Um, 
we're going to be looking at creating a very simple setup just using the formers to create these outer rings and using X particles to generate the particles inside of that uh, glass sphere. And also uh, as a secondary element, we've got these lines here um, that are created um, using splines and rendered with with a hair material it renders super fast super fast um, so we're going to be taking a look at that as well it's literally just two passes uh, that golden orb and then those lines so we're going to break down both uh, so let's jump into cinema 4d okay so here we are in cinema this is a very simple setup we're going to start by dropping a tube and we're going to make it a little bit thinner and we're gonna decrease the height a little bit. Now if we press MB to check out how many polygons we've got, I think we should add a few more, first of all, high segments. So we're gonna leave it at three, another three for the cap segments and the rotation segments, we're going to increase those by quite a bit. And we are also going to add a fillet. Um, now that's a little bit too big so we're gonna decrease the radius so it's a little bit more subtle and then if we press na i think that looks quite smooth and nice uh, now in order to deform the ring or every all i'm using is simply a twist deformer we make it a child of the object and now we are going to increase the angle and see what that is doing it's actually rotating the 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 ring in the wrong way so let's undo that and then rotate that twist and then if we make it uh, if we make that box a little bit bigger and set this to unlimited so it it, it covers um the whole ring uh we press twist we increase the angle that's doing the right thing now this shape i'm not super happy with but um all I did was actually just um, rotating the twist itself, so you change the way it's deforming that ring. So you can play around with that and um, get into something that I'm liking a little bit more. So happy with that. We press NA again. We can see that these edges could be a little bit smoother so what i'm going to do is just drop a hyper nerves and that is quite smooth uh, this uh, there are quite a lot of polygons in there so i'm happy with that now we're going to drop the sphere the glass sphere that's going to be inside of everything um, and we're going to drop a few more segments and then we're the first thing that we're going to do in terms of animation is going to be um, animating um, this ring we're gonna make it rotate randomly so first of all let's hide the twist and then to that so the version surface we can just right click so now 4d tags another vibrate tag to make it spin back and forth um, so we just need to enable the rotation and we'll give it an amplitude of about a hundred degrees in each direction and the frequency is going to be a bit too high so we're going to bring it down to something like 0.5 see what we're getting i'm happy with that um, and if you want to make this loop you just need to hit regular pulse and then that's going to go back and forth it's going to loop and when it comes back to the beginning of the of the sequence um, okay, so we're happy with that, and then we're gonna call this ring01, and then we're gonna make another copy of it. We're gonna call it ring02, and if we press T, we can make it smaller, and pressing R, we're going to rotate that so we get a different shape. Now, if you hit play, we're getting this orb and, and these rings rotating around it. I think that looks cool. So now we're going to create just the um, XP system to create uh, to generate the particles inside of the sphere. First of all, if we go to the sphere under the basic tab, we can make this X-ray so we can see the particles inside of it a little bit better. And let's drop a new X particle system. 
object. Let's go and hide that icon in the viewport. If we go to XP emitter, we're gonna create the emitter shape is gonna be a sphere. Um, as long as it's smaller than, than the containing sphere, that's fine. Um, and under display, let's make this create instead of dots are going to be too tiny in the viewport. I'm going to select circle field and let's see what that gives us. Okay, that's good and we can see them properly, but um, the size is a little bit too big. So we're going to bring that down to something like 0.8. And let's add some variation to that, variation of 0.5. And that's good. Now we want these particles to be contained inside the sphere. So in order to do that, we just need to right click on that sphere, X particle tags, and add a collide attack. Now the normals, we set this to any, we can set it to any or inside. Um, this is just to make the spheres um, hit uh, sorry the the particles hit the sphere and bounce back so there you go now they're self-contained and um we're going to choose a, a different a different frame to start um this uh particle simulation so if we go back to our xp emitter we go to object initial state and we set this state and that means that this is going to be the the initial frame on our sequence set state and there you go so now that that's done we are happy with our animation i'm just going to show you how to render this in redshift so if i bring in a new render view let's just dock this here and then let's first of all add a, an hdri to light the scene so redshift lights dome light and then let's see what we can find. So I'm going to drop this HGRI studio that is going to give us uh, nice reflections on everything. And let's see what we get. Now that looks fine, but I think we can increase the exposure a little bit to give uh, everything more contrast and, and better lighting. And now we're going to play around with, uh, with the dome. We're going to hit R and rotate it in such a way that's going to give us a, a nicely lit scene. Let's just leave it at something like that. That's fine. Um, okay, and now let's make it, um, let's make the background alpha by enabling this as a backplate. And now we just need to create uh, new textures and uh, this is super simple because I just used redshift presets so if we go under materials we'll add a new material and double click here to name this as gold there's going to be the gold for the um, uh, these two rings and then we just select a gold preset so select the material go under base properties and presets gold and now we get this nice um, this nice texture uh, I'm just going to change this color to something a little bit more orangey reddish and that's a little bit of a deeper kind of gold um, I also did add a maximum noise to the uh, roughness so if we do this connect this to um, reflection roughness that's gonna give us a bit of variation in, in, in these reflections so now we are going to make this um, this noise a little bit smaller actually so if we go to overall scale make it a bit smaller and then we are going to decrease the contrast and we are going to decrease the brightness so we bring back some of those nice reflections and going to decrease the contrast even more just feel free to play around with these obviously and then again decrease the, cry the brightness and just play around with this basically uh, you can add any other kind of textures to this just customize the shader that's your thing completely up to you um, and then we are going to add another new material to 
the sphere, this is going to be a glass preset. So again, preset glass, we apply it to the sphere. And now we need to tell the only thing that's left is uh, telling Redshift how to render these particles. So in order to do that, we just need to drop on the XP emitter, we just need to drop a Redshift tag, object tag, and then here in the, the particles tab, we select uh, sphere instances. And now this is going to be um, this is going to be rendering the particles properly. Um, now if we actually go back to that XP emitter under the display, the display tab, if we don't want these to be green, we can select a different color. We are going to actually select uh, the color of the particles to be coming from a gradient. Um, now this is not being reflected for a couple of reasons. First of all, uh, we need to uh, get rid of this state. We need to clear it and set a new one. So if we play this again now we are getting um, the right kind of color so we set this as a state and then we want to make these particles um, light we want them to be emitting this color instead of um, having this color in the diffuse so if we create a new redshift material we add it to the XP emitter and then double click. We just need to add a color user data node. Color user data and select um, the particle color from here. And now if we add it to overall, it's going to be the emission color. Now we go back on, on this material, we can get rid of the diffuse and the reflection because we're not going to need them. And then on the overall, we're going to increase the emission weight to something like two. And now that is emitting lights. We can actually increase that a bit more, something like five or even 10. And now they are emitting light. And that's basically what I did for this asset. And now back in After Effects, let's take a look at um, how these two passes are, are comped. Basically, there's literally nothing to this. There's not that much to break down because it's literally just these two passes. Um, this uh, scribbles uh, are created using splines in Cinema 4D, which we are about to take a look at. Um, and then one of the other things that I did was uh, duplicating them and you can see them here more out of focus and much bigger and I like to do this because uh, it kind of helps uh, fill the space a little bit and add a, a bit of sense of depth so anyway uh, let's go back into cinema and take a look at how to make these okay so again super simple setup. We are going to start by dropping a null onto our scene and then we're going to drop a cube and we are going to press T and make it quite a bit smaller and we're going to move it away from the center by pressing E and shift. So that movement is made in increments of 10 centimeters and we're going to bring it here. So we're going to move it 200 centimeters in the x-axis and we're going to make it a child of that null. Now the idea is that we are going to make this null rotate a bit randomly and obviously because the cube is a child of it, it's going to follow and then that movement made by the cube is going to be trace, traced uh, with a tracer object. So let's do that. Let's add a vibrate tag. So on the Cinema 4D tags vibrate and we're going to enable the rotation. Now I'm going to set this one to zero and I found that 360 degrees um, obviously covers for a quite random type of movement um, and the frequency at two is going to be a bit too high because you can see that if we play that the moving is a little bit too crazy so we're going to bring it down to something like 0 0.5 
and that way it's much smoother a little bit slower so uh, I think it's gonna look a little bit better now let's pause that and we just need to make copies of this um, these two objects so if we just uh, click control and drag it create a copy and we're going to rotate it a bit randomly like this for example and then we press T and scale it down like that and we're going to do it again by pressing control and dragging make it uh, even a little bit smaller press R again and rotate it like that for example now if we press play you can see the kind of movement that these cubes are making and we just need to trace it with a tracer object so if we press shift C to bring in the command window we just hit tracer bring it in and we're going to drop these cubes into this tracer object so first one two and three and now if we press play you can see that um, the splines that are being generated are coming from all the vertices of each cube so we just need to untick trace vertices and now we're going to get one spline per cube like that and I am going to actually close those splines as well so it's looking good now I, I can see that these splines are not super smooth so we're going to have to add a few more segments to them and we can do that by selecting a different type of spline we're going to make it a B spline and then into uh, on the intermediate points we're going to click natural and that way it smoothens out um, those blinds now we don't need those cubes anymore so we can go ahead and hide them by pressing alt and selecting all these objects like that now you we can hide those nulls and cubes um, and yeah so we get these kind of movement created by by the by the tracer and now what we're going to do is in order to give the whole asset uh, the aspect of something a bit more spherical we're going to create a couple of um, circles blinds like that and then I'll make a copy of it and rotate it 90 degrees like that and there you have it now we can um, group everything if we select everything and group it onto an all by pressing alt G we can um, make this rotate if we go onto the coordinates and we go back to the beginning of our, of our timeline we're going to set a key from here at zero degrees go to the end of our timeline and set this to 359 degrees and we set another keyframe and then the whole system is going to be rotating now we want this um, movement this rotation to be constant so we're going to make our, our keyframes linear so if we press shift f3 we bring in the timeline we're going to select those keyframes and we're going to make them linear like that um, now the other thing that i added to this um, simple asset uh, where just a few spheres that we're animating along these inner splines so very easily we just need to drop a new cloner and a sphere and we're gonna press T and make it much smaller something like that should do we're going to drop it into the cloner and this cloner we're gonna set it to object mode and into that object by the way let's make this cloner let's put it inside of this uh, group um, so yeah so that cloner is on object mode and we're going to drop the tracer into that object and that's going to generate a bunch of clones that are going to be 
uh, stick into those blinds. Uh, now we don't need as many, so we're going to bring the count down to two. And in order to animate them, all we need to do is just um, animate the offset like this. So if we go back to the beginning of our timeline, we set a keyframe on offset at 0%, go to the end, set it to 100% and set another keyframe. And basically that is all you need to create this asset. Now, in order to render it, a very fast way to render these blinds is using the uh, using a hair material, you can always, of course, uh, sweep them to, cre to create um, some geometry, but um, a territory, uh, we quite like to use the hair material to, um, to render things like this. It's super, super fast. Um, and yeah, in a studio environment where, where the pace is really fast, um, we value these things. So let's create a new shader. So hair material. We're going to drop it onto those circles as well as the tracer. And if we render that, you can see that obviously it's that brown material and, and um, it's a little bit thick as well. So we're going to edit that very quickly. Uh, we are not going to need the specular channel. So we're just going to need the backlit color, color and the thickness. If we go to color, we just need one color, not this gradient. So we can select that knot and hit delete. And we're going to set this to white. We can copy the shader in this channel and go to backlit color and paste it. And now under the thickness, we're going to set both the roots and the tip to 0 0.1 like that. And then if we render this, you get um, exactly what I showed you earlier and it's animated and that's really all there is to this. So I hope you liked it. Okay, so another screen that I created is this one uh, where the most important thing, the hero element is this sort of sound wave. So I created this uh, um, as a way to communicate that this randomly generated uh, grid of symbols is being read by this program and is generating this kind of sound wave, uh, converting the information into these frequencies. Um, this kind of stuff is, is what we do on a daily basis. Um, and I'm going to be breaking down, yeah, this area over here, this hero, these hero elements, um, how this is all created uh, with a very simple setup in Cinema 4D. Uh, so we're going to be looking at that. But first of all, uh, let's take a look at how to create um, this grid uh, of randomly uh, generated symbols, because it's a very simple setup. It's going to be very quick to create. And um, yeah, let's take a look into how to make it in Cinema. Okay, so this is an extremely simple setup. Um, all I've got here is just these six textures that I don't want to waste time relinking, so that's why I've got them here. Um, all the rest of this is just uh, the luminance channel is active, and each of these textures has a different kind of shape. I made these in Illustrator very quickly, so you can see just six of them but of course you can have as many as you want um, and let's get to get that set up so first of all we're going to drop a cube i'm going to make it a little bit smaller let's go for eight by eight by eight centimeters um, and we're going to drop our first texture to it we're going to call this one just to correspond with um with the number over there in the texture. I'm going to make five more copies. One, two, three, four, five, and six in total. We're going to call them, name them correctly. This is going to make it easier if we want to add more later or just for the sake of uh, being organized. Um, and we're going to add one texture to each of them. Four goes to four, five goes to five, and six goes to six. And now we're going to drop a cloner and drop 
all of these cubes under the cloner and the cloner we're going to set it to uh, grid array and then we don't need copies in the z space so we're going to bring this count to one and then we can look at this from the front if we go to cameras front uh, we're going to cover more of the space by just increasing the size of this in the x and y axis like that and we're going to drop a few more clones in here just by increasing the count like that and a few more like that and now you can see that we've got enough variation in here if we render this uh, with a black background um, there's enough variation but in order to animate this uh, we're going to do that by using a shader effector so we uh, press the cloner we click on it and we press shift c to bring the um, the command window and we're gonna type shader press enter and that's automatically applied uh, that effect is automatically applied to our cloner so now within the cloner uh, the parameter in the parameter tab we don't want it to affect the scale all we want to do is um, affect the how the um, these clones are modified so increase the modified clone to 100% and now they all change to this last uh, type of particle this one but to bring back the variation what uh, the variation in these particles all we're going to do is just um, in the shading tab we're going to add a new shader it's going to be a noise and there you have it you are bringing back now some of that um, variation we can increase the contrast to bring in some of um, some of the other type of uh, particles too and we can play around with the brightness contrast high clip so all of these parameters uh, if you play around with those you're going to uh, change the amount of um, of each clone that you're going to bring so something about that should look good there you go and now if we animate this uh cloner let's say one the animation speed and we're going to loop it by giving it three in the loop period and now if we watch this you can see that is now looping and it's animated it's looking good so that is basically how you set this up now one last thing that you can do is if you want to have a few gaps in here all you need to do is just um, is just create a blank space by adding another type of clone another type of clone to that cloner so if we bring in a null leave it there now we are adding blank spaces to our grid so if we render that you can see all these black areas where there is no nothing no clone um it's just a null so they are blank and that's how you do this and now that we know how to create uh this grid over here let's um jump back into cinema 4d to learn how to create this hero element this sound wave uh there is just uh, three passes to this uh so we are going to make them from scratch in cinema Okay, so we are going to start by dropping a rectangle to create some splines. Um, so first, let's press C to make it editable. And if we go to point mode, we can select these two guys and delete them. And we are left with a perfectly straight spline. Now back to object mode, we can see that the axis is not centered. So if we go to mesh, axis center, and with everything at 0%, we hit execute. It goes back to where it should be and we can just go ahead and zero out its position like so now we are going to be looking at it from here from the center it's like a front view so we want to cover the whole screen so in order to do that we go back to point mode select this one bring it back to about there and do the same with this one bring it to to this area over here and we are now going to clone this spline a bunch of times. So bringing a new cloner 
and object linear we increase the count by quite a bit but we don't want them to be uh, cloned in the y axis we want them to be cloned in the z axis like that we can bring in a few more clones if we want to and now we select both right click and connect objects and delete and we that's gonna give let's go and let's give it splines name um, and now we are going to displace this using a displacer object make it a child of the splines and then under the shading tab we are going to add a new noise now if we increase the height of this displacer you can see that obviously um, it's displacing the uh, the splines entirely uh, and that's because we only have per spline one point here and the other one around here so we need to add quite a few more if we go to splines intermediate points we're going to set this to natural and we're going to bring then this number to something crazy like 450 and now if we leave that we can see that um, our splines are being displaced correctly but not in the right axis because uh, we want them to be displaced in the y-axis so let's fix that by going to the displacer object and the direction we set this to planar and the orientation is going to be plus y and now we are guessing the right kind of thing uh, what is left now is just uh, we're going to limit this displacement towards the center of, um, of of the screen so if we create a new fall off and use a spherical field let's just bring it back a bit and make it quite a bit bigger something like that and then um, we are going to play around with the shade with the noise um, we are going to first play around with the scale let's bring this up to something like 800 and now the counter displacement is much smoother uh, now if you you uh, you can play around with uh, with the types of noise and that's going to give you different types of uh, deformations uh, so let's just scroll around a bunch of these to see how you can get really interesting looks just by selecting a different type of noise this is looking good um, but uh, one type of noise that I thought works pretty well was stipple so let's just set it to that and now what we're going to do is just create a new camera and look at this from the front. So if we zero out its position as well as its rotation and we just separate ourselves from it a little bit. Now we are getting this sort of waveform using splines that I was talking about. And that would be the, our first element. So now we can go ahead and group this into an alt, call it splines, and there's going to be the first one of our passes. Uh, the second one is going to be just a bunch of spheres cloned into these splines. So we can quickly do that by dropping a new sphere. Let's set its radius to something like one. Um, dropping a new cloner and make that sphere a child of the cloner and set this cloner to object mode and in that object um, space we're going to drop our splines and let's bring the count up by quite a bit and there's going to be a nice uh, extra detail um, that's going to make uh, that's going to enhance the look of of this sound wave um, now in order, in order to add even more variation we can with having this clone selected, we can bring in a new random effector. Uh, and let's just bring it here. And the pro in the parameter, instead of the position, we're going to click the scale, uniform scale, and we're going to make it minus one. And that's going to give variation to the scale of, of those spheres. And now, something I forgot to do, by the way, is just under this displacer, because this is going to be animated. Uh, let's just go ahead and add some animation speed. Let's set that to one. And if we want it to loop, let's do something like three, which is going to give us three cycles um, along 90 frames, which is what we have our timeline set to. So let's look at 
what that looks like and that's looking pretty cool so let's go ahead and take a look at the last one of our um, elements it's going to be just a, a few sound bars i'm going to show you how to create right now first of all let's just group this again for the sake of being organized and call this spheres um, and let's hide everything for now and let's bring in a new cube that's going to be the base of our first bar so if we make it a little bit thinner like that bringing a new one make it tiny like that and bring it up and also make a copy of it and bring it down now we've got the base of our bar so let's just select all of those cues connect objects and delete and we're going to call that bar which we are now just going to clone a bunch of times it's a very very simple setup so uh let's just bring up the count not in the y axis but the x axis and let's just bring that back actually let's not increase the the space between clones but rather the count and then if we look again i think for my taste these are a little bit too big so let's select the bar and press t and make these ones a bit smaller and again let's play around with the space in between clones and bringing a few more like that and that's looking a little bit better and in order to add variation to the scale of um of these uh, uh these bars let's just bring in a new random effector and in, instead of obviously uh, affecting its position it's going to affect the scale and the y axis like that and in order to animate them we just go to the effector tab select noise and actually let's play around again with that scale let's make it smaller and then if we hit play we can see that that's animated and it's looking good now the last thing i need to show you is how to render this in redshift so let's go ahead pause that and let's start with the bars so let's bring in a new redshift render view and dock it here on the right and let's add a new redshift material drop it onto our cloner by the way let's just group everything together again call that bars like that and let's just edit this um, shader so first of all let's go to our base properties and we are not going to need diffuse or reflection at all we are going to use under the overall tab we are going to use just the emission so let's bring that weight to something like two and we are going to use a gradient um, to pipe into that emission color so if we bring in a new ramp node we can pipe it into that emission color and let's take a look at what we get over here uh, now in order to create even more variation and give this uh, somewhat of a digital look uh, we are going to load a preset um, on the on this ramp it's going to be this pattern one um, but because of the color we are going to be adding it in after effects we don't need this to be colored by anything in fact i prefer it to be black and white so we can add a color correct note like that and let's going to pipe that ramp into the input and the input uh, sort of the out color into that emission color and then we can first of all increase the contrast bring down the saturation scale to zero we can bring the gamma down as well and increase the contrast even more and now we're getting this sort of digital look that is going to look pretty cool when we render it um, and that would be one pass done actually so let's just hide it for now let's focus on how to render the splines and the spheres so obviously 
uh, Redshift can see the spheres because it, that's geometry, but it cannot see the splines until we add a render, uh, sorry, a Redshift tag to them. So a Redshift object tag, and under the curve um, uh, tab, we set the mode to hair strands, and now it can detect those. Uh, Redshift can detect those splines. First of all, let's bring the th thickness down to 0 0.1. And then if we create a new incandescent material, that's going to give us pure white. And we're going to add it to those splines. And that's looking good. Now, the last thing would be uh, to add depth of field to this because it's going to look um, a little bit cooler. So um, to that camera, let's add a redshift camera tag. Under the bokeh tab, we can overwrite that. Oops, sorry, like that. And we can derive um, depth of field from the focus distance. So if we increase that COC radius, we're going to throw everything out of focus. Um, and the area that we want to focus on, we can uh, drive that with a null object that we're going to call cam focus. Uh, if we select our camera under this focus object, we are going to drop this null. And there you have it. Now you're getting these uh, lines in focus and everything else is out of focus. And of course we can play around with that COC radius to bring some of those D cells back and keeping um, a few more areas in focus. So play around with this and that's essentially how to render these now you can render all the passes and I'll show you now how to um, comp this in After Effects so once in After Effects um, I'm gonna break down very quickly for you how to uh, comp something like this just taking a look at the passes that we got from cinema uh, now what I did this is the sound bar uh, the sound bars but what I did is just actually increase uh, the size on the Z axis for each bar, but you can also get a similar look to this if you add a new um, zoom blur to them. Um, then if we take a look at the particles, the tiny spheres are rendered in a separate pass and then the splines. And because uh, they are so thin, they come out a little bit too faint. So something that I did was we close this and go to the effects control I added uh, an exposure effect and increased that by quite a bit and that makes them uh, a little bit brighter um, then I'd like to add the color here in After Effects I like so I like everything coming out black and white from cinema and then with a tint effect I add the color that's what I did for these then I normally duplicate it so, um, a bunch of times and then I can also offset it give it a different color and then offset uh, a copy um, uh, its position or its scale and then I can I also like to like a bit here it's just add a new copy make it uh, a bit more faint by bringing the opacity down you can see here and then just throw it out of focus and that adds quite a bit of depth to the whole thing um, then what I did as well was just bringing the particle pass and then added glow to them and a bit of a bit of um, a blur in the y-axis as well and what I did with the sound bars is just making a bunch of copies of them and I play around with um, the blending mode uh, again like I said I add tint tints and glows to control the color of them and that's basically how things like that are comped well and that wraps everything up um, I hope you enjoyed the presentation and you could take away um, a few valuable pieces of information today uh, thank you again to uh, the entire Maxim family for allowing me to present uh, today and um, basically, if you want to stay in touch, uh, by all means, uh, go to territorystudio.com and check out our work. And if you are interested in, in working with us or you would like to 
but you would like us to take a look at any of the pieces that you create in Cinema 4D, um, yeah, just send us a message on social media. At a more personal level, if you'd like, you can always reach out to me um, on Instagram or Twitter or on my website. Uh, I am at, at uh, PDR underscore Ramos uh, on social media. So yeah, if you'd like, just drop me a message. Um, and basically, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Uh, keep creating with Cinema 4D and show us what you can make with it. Um, and yeah, I'll catch you on the flip side. Thank you.